might try and use the big iPad here. Everybody's been using the keypad thing. But, uh, let's see how we go. Yeah. So I'm, uh, I'm Neil Murphy. I'm conscious that I'm the last one up here. Neil Murphy, I'm from a company called Converging Data. And uh, it's a bit of a different presentation here. Not so much statistics, but actually what we do is we collect data and we put it to work. And I want to show you some of the examples of how we're doing that in a, in a, uh, in a clinical setting. Um, I have to apologize. We do work for banks. Please don't judge us. Uh, we do take the money we get from the banks and put it to good causes. We do products in, uh, in healthcare. This is the area we're, we're, we're really passionate about. Um, is that the right way? There we go. So, yeah, we've got a fair amount of, of NHS uh, credentials. The two founders of the company are both ex-NHS uh, IT guys. We worked in, I think they're calling it uh, NHS Digital this week. When we were there, it was called, it was called something else. I think they had a few rebrandings. Um, but in, in, in we... Um, uh, yeah, so that, that, that's kind of our background. So we've, we've done work here and, uh, and, and in Australia. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of, you might have seen these. Is that working? <laughs> it just doesn't want to come. There we go. Oh, there we go. A couple of quotes from the Carter Report. I don't know if you, you're familiar with this. Most of the clinicians might be. Um, this came out earlier this year. The, the Department of Health asked Lord Carter to do a review, and he came out with a few conclusions. Some great quotes in this document. Um, their estimate, he estimates that if, effectively what he's saying is if we could take the best practice from every hospital and, and replicate that in all the hospitals, we could save five billion pounds. But what he also says is that the use of real-time data and putting that in the hands of decision makers on the ground is really vital to, to driving this process and seeing that. Um, it's kind of interesting when he talks about real-time and then says, yeah, we can make decisions every day. Well, actually, real-time is now and what's happening now inside your organization. And this is really, this is really different. It's a real challenge for complex care pathways. It's really difficult for people engaged in one part of a care pathway to understand what, what implications their actions are having further down the chain, especially when that care pathway is now extending out into the community. And, and these systems and IT services are usually quite poorly integrated. They're not all speaking to each other. Um, uh, well, they're not, they're not particularly well integrated. So what we do is we try and provide this end-to-end -end visibility so you can actually see what's happening at all parts of the process. We gather data from right across the environment and we create dashboards like this one and reports and alerts that let people know early on what's happening across the environment. Now, we're not the only people doing this, but we, we, we do this in a slightly different way. Um, this is a, a kind of more traditional approach that, that people have taken. Um, this is from, from one of the, the NHS trusts that we're, we're, we're in dealings with at the moment. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's a complex process of trying to get all of these different systems to, to, to use a common language and share and integrate all of these things. And you just know by looking at it, it's going to take forever and it's going to be really expensive. And we've been trying to do it this way for like 20 years. And, and we don't do it this way. We've, we've, we've adopted a, a slightly different approach. And, and the reason for that is that um, we started from a, from a different place. Um, we mentioned the, the, the NHS. I actually left the NHS in 2011. I went to Australia to work. I'm going a bit off piece here, but it's, it's all past. Um, but we went to Australia to work for the National eHealth Transition Authority on one of their big uh, national programs. So they built this thing called the PCHR, which is a bit like the spine, only more complicated with more rules about it. Um, it's an interesting place down there. They've got uh, seven departments of health, effectively, and then the federal government over the top. There's a lot of private sector work. Things like pathology, radiology is generally in the private sector. Everybody's got private insurance. So everything's very fragmented. And when you're trying to collect information from across those places, you have to sort of do that in a, in a slightly different way. Um, and we built the PCHR, and I did a lot of work rolling that out and getting these jurisdictions to go and use it. And then what happened was people started to talk about, well, we've got all of these systems, and they're all interdependent in terms of delivering care but they're not integrated and they're not tied together. So they, they depend on each other. So what about resiliency? What happens if something fails in one place and what's the impact on the, on the patient? So we, we did, a, this is a scary diagram, please don't try and make sense of it. Um, we did a piece of work though, where we got a load of clinicians in the room and we, we looked through some scenarios using these, these national services and we tried to get them to define what the implications to the patient were of a failure in any of those areas. And it meant that we could then come up with a, it looks like a wiring diagram, but we could point to a piece of the kit and say, well, if that thing fails, five minutes later, people are going to have an issue. Five minutes later, the, the people in, uh, the GP is going to have an issue, or 15 minutes later, for, and we were able to map that. And, and I know this should have happened earlier in the process, but people then were, were, great, now we know that, what are we going to do about it? And we started looking for tools to go and gather this information, understand what was happening across this kind of wide area of, of services. 
And, and what we came up with was, was something called Splunk. So this is a commercially available tool. This is not ours. Um, but what it does, which is great for people who are into statistics and data and modeling, is it allows you to gather data from just about anywhere. So we can get data straight out of a structured database if it's sitting in SQL Server or Oracle or something like that. We can get data off the network. But a lot of information comes just from data that's been written into log files from all of the different types of applications that are sitting around in everybody's environment. So, you know, we might get data from your security systems or from uh, real-time location services as people are walking around. We can grab data from mobile phone apps. But in the same way, we can da get data from lots of different clinical applications. And what we've done, converging data is, what we've done is we've actually added a, a healthcare-specific component to this. So, I don't know if you're familiar with HL7 data, but HL7 is, is an international standard for the exchange of clinical information. So if you've got a number of clinical information systems and they're exchanging it, if you're in a hospital, all of those systems, even though they might not, if they do talk to each other, they're doing it using HL7. They're squirting the data backwards and forwards. And what we've done is we've stood up a connector that allows us to grab a copy of that data. We just have to stand up a, a receiver and we can receive that information. And we can then take all the, the, the other data that we're gathering from across your environment and we can pull those two things together and we can start to populate those dashboards that I showed you. We can start to make that, that information visible. So machine data is, is, is typically what's the, what this is called. Think about anything that's been written somewhere that's humanly readable. So we, couldn't, we can't index your, your image files, but we can index the metadata that's being collected associated with those things, and we can point you back to those things. But generally anything that's been written in these, these kind of standards we can, we can take out. So this is an example of what machine data is and how powerful it can be. So um, this is not clinical. This is somebody online trying to order something. So you go online and you're trying to place your order, and then somewhere in, in the depths of the IT stack, there's a, Oracle decides it doesn't like it. And you're sitting there looking at that disk, and you do that for a little while. And then you phone up the help desk to tell them how terrible their system is. And they keep you waiting for 16 minutes. And then you slam the phone down, and you go on Twitter and tell everybody how terrible they are. So what you've got there are four different uh, sources of information. They're, they're not, there's not a standard structure of, of how that's collated. But because you're pulling that together, you've gone from all those different pieces to actually profiling the the customer's experience. And what we're trying to do is do the same thing with patient experience. So we can gather that data from across the clinical setting and actually profile what, what's happening in that space. So this, this stuff is, uh, uh, is what you call HL7. So this is what it looks like under the covers. And this is what Splunk looks like under the covers. We don't show too many people this, although the IT geeks love it. They like to come and wait about in this space. But what, what Splunk does, which is really clever, is it takes this information and it allows you to break it out very easily. You don't have to define what the schema is that everything's going to use. It's really smart at, at seeing key value pairs in the data and then breaking that out. And we've augmented this with, uh, there's, there's typically a common information model that you can use in that space. We've got a healthcare common information model, which means that we can now break things out here in terms of clinical directorate or care location. And these things are all things that, that the clinicians would recognize and they'd be, able to, they'd be able to use. Which means we could take that stuff, which is basically events over time and what's happening right now, and, and we could start to do this. So this is one of our dashboards, and you can, you can define this for your healthcare uh, service. You can define the KPIs that go into this and what's important to you and, and when things turn from green to amber to red. It looks like we've got a particularly good day here, but there's, uh, you, can, you can also set triggers so that if something goes to a certain level, you could, somebody gets paged, somebody gets alerted, uh, somebody gets a call, and you can start to move your resources. And, and typically, that's the problem you're trying to overcome. So this is, this is actually a care pathway for New South Wales. Everybody comes in this end. Uh, everybody ends up in a bed, hopefully their own, but you never know where they're, they're actually going to go. And, and what you're able to do is to start looking at pinch points in the process and where resources might better, better be applied. Um, and this is all driven by real-time data. Now, this, this would be typically... Ideally, you'd present it somewhere like this. You could have it on the wall in, a, in an ER, or you could have this uh, as a high-level executive dashboard. But you can then start to drill down. So I've, I can see one of my KPIs has gone a bit high, so I'm going to drill down into what's happening in the, in the assessment team. And then I might want to go into a bit more detail. Well, now we're getting a bit more uh, in terms of I've identified a problem. I want to get some more specific details around what's happening. So this is, this is actually based on some real data we got from um, real, test, real anonymized data should I say, that we, we got from uh, a, a hospital in the north of England, which is all about transfers and admissions between, first of all, people landing in the hospital, and then what wards they went to and how they were transferred. 
And we could see here that, that, that somebody's breached or there's an ER breach here because somebody's been in, in there for longer than four hours. And when you go and talk to these guys, what they say is that, yeah, you can throw a lot more resources at ER if you like or the, the, the emergency room, but um, actually the problem is that there are not enough beds available further down the pipeline. But nobody's tracking that. Nobody's able to, able to see that. So this information then starts to become really useful. You can start to see the referrals that are taking place inside the hospital and what the overall per patient flow is. I think this one's in more detail. Yeah. So, so this is the overall picture showing me everybody that's arriving in the emergency room and then what wards they're going through and where they're ending up. And then I can drill into a bit more detail. So here I've taken the, uh, the, the particular hospital uh, and I can see that I'm getting these many people coming in from ER and this many. Somebody was in a corridor, which for some reason, um, maybe that is a ward, I don't know. And then this is where they get passed on to and this is where they get referred to. So it starts to give you that vis visual about how uh, activity is taking place and, and you then get, get yourself into a position where you can start to start to do something about it. Um, mentioned about bed availability so we've done a further deep dive now in terms of bed availability for a particular ward so I can start to see what's happening in this particular space and what I'm like as far as capacity is concerned and all of that great stuff we've just heard about machine learning and feeding that in this is where it starts to get really interesting because what I'd, I'd like to see next is once you start to gather this data is if I've got, a, 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 if I'm at a particular capacity and I know I get this percentage of my patients from the ER and some of these are from referrals and it's cold outside and it's a, it's a, a Thursday night in September, what's the probability of my ward filling up in the next four hours which is going to have that knock-on effect and the guys are going to breach down there? And it, it's a really great use case and it's not beyond us, you know, this, this data is all available. One thing that starts to come across is that you can build all of this based on data that's already in, in place. We've not gone to a great, great trouble as far as integrating all of these applications, the 20 applications, 30 applications that are involved. We've gone to a number of key locations and just been able to re re um, uh, retrieve that data. So you can continue to go down. You can look at the number of beds that are available. You can drill down to the patient level and start to get, uh, get to that and, and look at the key length of stays and the durations and, and start to drive behavior using some of this information. Um, here again, I'm looking at... Um, yeah, overall positions in terms of the thresholds. And these can be used to trigger alerts. So I might decide actually, uh, when this gets to this point, uh, and I've, I've got that, that additional information, then we need to start getting people out, out of the door. I, another quote from the Carter report is that there's 8,000 people in, in hospital beds today who don't need to be in those beds. Um, pushing those people out of the door a bit, a bit, a bit faster means that the A&E is under less pressure because those people have then got somewhere to go. And we can start to put some data behind this and feed this information in. So again, ward by ward now, I'm able to, to build a, a real picture of, of what's going on in the hospital. The other thing we do is to try and, is to try and make this as, as um, uh, we, we try and push the support of this kind of thing back to, back to the people that are running the hospital. So what we can do is we can actually do a profile of the particular, uh, first of all, the town and then the particular hospital and then the, the speciality so that people can decide what's important to them. So they can define those, their, their own KPIs and those breaches based on how the, the hospital is organized. And what this automatically does then is, is that as soon as we start getting some of that HL7 data in that relates to some of these pa patterns, that's immediately recognized and reflected back in. Works really nicely. Um, I'll not go into this too much. Basically, this is, these are the standards, the international standards that we can easily pick up. But again, it doesn't have to be structured data with us. Unstructured data is fine. And that also means that we can reach out into the, to the wider community. So if we want to put, pick out data from social services applications to know how many places there are in, in, uh, in, in beds and social services outside the, the hospital facility, want to get data from GP systems, etc. We can pull all that stuff together. Um, lastly, really, the, just where this sits. So we're, we're, we're very much at this end. We're talking about real-time data and being able to gather this and put this to good use and let people get uh, warnings and alerts and reports. But in the longer term, people want to get into that statistical and historical data. So we play nice with the Hadoop guys. We can take all of the, the data that we're gathering in here and we can push it into Hadoop so people can do that longer term trending. And you can search across all of that if you want to and, and, and start to feed that back in. But again, I think certainly in healthcare, the real opportunity is to start feeding the pieces that are coming out of this historical data back into that real time stuff so you can drive better behavior and close that loop.